Baby, you can drive my car, sang the Beatles. Today, Baby is a big, healthy electric-powered truck, the Ford F-150 Lightning EV. Come the summer of 2022, Baby will also be a GM EV Hummer and EV Hummer pickup whose owners will send electrons from their vehicle's batteries into their homes to thwart blackouts. Then and thereafter, the song might be sung, Baby, You Can Power My House. General Motors and California's largest electricity provider, Pacific Gas and Electric, announced a pilot program to test GM's EVs in the provisioning of backup power to homes. GM promises to bring 30 new EVs to market riding on its Ultima platform. GM will be rolling out another pickup, the Silverado EV, that will most likely have the backup power option, and myriad other automakers are right behind. A case in point, BMW has already started working with PG&E. When a car powers a home, it's called vehicle to home. When a car powers a building, it's called vehicle to building. And if a car provides power into the utility grid, it's called V2G. Some eight years ago, for example, a demonstration smart grid began at the Los Angeles Air Force Base that connected 40 electric vehicles, such as Nissan Leaf EVs and Phoenix electric buses, to the base's buildings and to the grid. In conversations about this, the, the word bidirectional is said a lot. A writer on this subject recently noted, the only thing that no one seems to have a definitive answer to is what effect does bidirectional charging have on batteries? Would its battery reach the end of its useful life sooner than the battery in a similar car that does not participate in V2G activities? However, a study of this at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratories has found that no appreciable degradation takes place in EV batteries due to V2G or V2B or V2H as long as they're kept within the battery's Goldilocks zone. Not too hot, not too cold, not too drained, they're fine. The same writer also brought up a, another issue. He said, for your electric vehicle to power your home in the blackout, you'll need to be able to plug your car into the home likely through a charger located in the garage or a carport. There's no good way to send power from public charging spots back to, say, an apartment, and it's hard enough to figure out how to send energy from public chargers back into the grid. That inherently limits the benefits to people who have enough income not only to buy an electric vehicle, but also to live in a home with a garage. Again, however, the writer has not heard of the technology offered by companies such as MOVE, which allow owners of parking lots, condo owners, multi-unit dwelling residents, aggregate the power from the EVs that are charging in their parking spaces. A community of EV owners can offer V2B for their apartment building or condo units. Office managers might do the same with EVs in their parking structure. And finally, as another sustainability plus, with all sorts of EVs stationary and plugged in in parking lots and driveways and homes having bi-directional power flow capacity. Whenever the utility needs to find more power to avoid turning to dirty power, rapidly firing up burning coal, gas, or oil and emitting greenhouse gases as they do. EV-based vehicle to home Vehicle to building and vehicle to grid systems can stop our utility companies from needing to fire up fossil fuel plants to provide us with peak power. That will be a big win for the goal of keeping the climate cooler than the trajectory it's on right now.